Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin and welcome to part three of cool iPhone tips and tricks I bet you didn't know. Let's jump into it. The first cool trick that I really love on the iPhone that I think a lot of people don't know about is that you can set a sleep timer on your iPhone. And that means that rather than playing a sound when the timer stops, it's going to stop anything that's playing. So if you wanted to go to bed watching a YouTube video and you set a sleep timer, that will stop the YouTube video from playing whenever your sleep timer goes off. It will also lock your device when the timer's up so your screen won't stay on if you fall asleep, which is a big battery saver. So to do this, all you have to do is go into the clock. From there, you go into timer and you set the timer length in hours and minutes. So let's say I wanna do one hour and 10 minutes. Then you'll go down and tap when timer ends here and you'll scroll down all the way to the bottom where you see stop playing. You click that and then you go up and hit set. Tap start to start the timer. So now you'll see that at 1014, which is an hour and about 10 minutes from now, anything that I'm playing on my phone will automatically turn off and the display on my phone will also turn off. This is better than third party apps because you don't need an extra app on your phone and it will still work without the clock app being open. So if I were to close the app completely, you can see if I go back into it, that the timer is still going. It's still gonna do its job without having the app open, which can help save battery as well. Another cool thing about this is that your preference to stop playing media when the timer finishes will be remembered by your phone. So if you wanna quickly set a sleep timer, depending on your phone, you either swipe up or swipe down from the side. I have the 12, so I swipe down from the side. You just go to the timer button here, press down and hold, and you'll see that the timer is still set for one hour and 10 minutes. It remembered that setting from the last time that I set a timer, and it's set that easily. You can see it's already going. This also means you don't need to go back into the clock app and select a ringtone if you ever want an audible timer in the future. So like I said, that tip is a big battery saver. And I actually have another tip for you on how to optimize your battery charging in general. First, you're gonna wanna go into settings and then scroll to battery. Click on that and then hit battery health. There's this option here called optimized battery charging. So I'm gonna to toggle that on. What this does is that it learns from your daily habits of using your phone. It knows when you charge it, when you need it to wake up, and what you do throughout the day with it. Once it can get a general sense of that, it won't charge your phone until you actually need it fully charged. For example, if you plug your phone in when you're sleeping, it won't charge your battery to 100% until it knows you'll be waking up based on your daily habits. That way, it's not degrading the battery life by overcharging it. In general, a battery is considered degraded or worn when it gets to under 80%. The maximum capacity right here is at 100% for me. I have a fairly new iPhone, so my battery is working at 100% of its abilities. But that number will tell you if your battery is degrading at all from how it performed when it was new. If this does get to under 80, you can easily swap out the battery from Apple. Little fun fact, you can also put your phone on airplane mode when charging and that will make it charge faster. And to do that, you just go back into settings, scroll up and toggle on airplane mode. This next one is really fun because we all know that Siri is pretty smart, but she's not perfect. And pronunciation can be especially difficult if you have a name that's tricky to get right. Sometimes she gets names tragically wrong. When she pronounces something incorrectly, all you have to do is respond with, that's not how you pronounce, and then the name. And she'll ask for the correct pronunciation. Give it to her and she'll say it back to check she's got it right. She'll even give you a couple of options. So here's how you do it. Hey Siri, say Josiah. Josiah Lee. Let me know if I should learn how to say their name. Hey Siri, learn how to pronounce Josiah. Okay, let me hear how you say the name. Josiah. Okay, thank you. Which pronunciation is it okay for me to use? So she'll give you a couple of pronunciations. You can just play them back and then select the one that you like. So let's try them out. Josiah. Josiah, Josiah, Josiah. So I'm gonna go with option two, so I'll hit select. Okay, let me hear how you say the name. Lee. Okay, thank you. Which pronunciation is it okay for me to use? Lee, Lee? Those sound essentially the same to me, so I'll go with option one. So as you can hear, she now has learned how to pronounce Josiah. You can do this with any name in your entire contact list and she will get it right. 
The next tip I'm gonna show you is in the Shortcuts app. So we're gonna scroll over here and find my Shortcuts app. Click on that. And then I'm gonna click on Automation. In here, I'm gonna show you how to set your Do Not Disturb by location. So if you want your Do Not Disturb to be on anytime you are, say, at work, you can set that up so that you will have silenced calls and texts the entire time that you're at your office. So I'm gonna go into Create Personal Automation, and then I'm gonna click Arrive. I'm gonna enter the location, so hit Choose. I'm gonna type in where I am, and click Done. If you don't select a time range, then this will be on any time you're at the place that you have specified. But if you do want to set a time range, just go into time range. You can set, say, 9 to 5, hit done, then click next. Then we're going to click add action. We're going to go into scripting, and then we're going to scroll until we see do not disturb. Click that. Where it says off, we're going to toggle that to on. Where it says turned off, I'm going to change this to I leave. I'm going to tap next and then done. Now you'll see a new shortcut in your personal automation and you don't have to do anything except arrive at your location. So now anytime I show up to work, my phone will be set to do not disturb and as soon as I leave, it'll be right back to normal. So we all have apps that we probably use only once a year or so. You don't want them on your home screen cluttering everything up because you never use them. Well, I've got a tip to solve all of those problems. All you have to do is go into settings and then scroll to home screen. Right here, click that. And you'll see up here, newly downloaded apps. You can add to home screen or app library only. Right now, by default, it's add to home screen. So anything new that you download will automatically be added to your home screen. But if I change it to app library only, and then go back, anything new that I download from the app store will go immediately into my app library only. To get to the app library, all you have to do is scroll to the right until it comes up. You'll see suggestions, recently added, and then it breaks it up into different categories, such as social media or travel. For the apps that are already on your phone that you maybe want to hide, such as this one right here, you just click it, hold down, and then you can hit remove app. Then you get this option, you can delete the app or you can remove from home screen. I'm just going to remove from home screen. And now that's no longer on my home screen, but if I swipe over to the app library, you can see that it is still in fact there and I can go into that. If I then want to add it back in, I just click and hold and then hit add to home screen. And you'll see it's right back there. It's super easy and it keeps your phone looking clean all day long. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool to enhance your voice on audio recording. This can be really helpful if you need some quality sound for an audio recording. So what you're gonna do first is go into voice memos. In voice memos, you can take advantage of enhanced recording to reduce the background noise. We're gonna make a recording Hi everyone, this is Caitlin from Apt, and today we are learning tips and tricks about your iPhone. Play that back real quick. Hi everyone, this is Caitlin from Apt, and today we are learning tips and tricks about your iPhone. Now I'm gonna tap the three dots right here and hit edit recording. Now all you have to do is tap this magic wand icon and you're done. Let's listen to it. Hi everyone, this is Caitlin from Apt, and today we are learning tips and tricks about your iPhone. You can tell that it sounds like my voice is a little more clear and there is no background noise at all. The next little trick I have for you guys is how to use the ruler to draw straight lines whenever you're marking things up. So if I go into Safari and I want to take a screenshot of the website at Apt, I'm going to take my screenshot and then I'm going to click this right here. Now I'm in the markup page. So if I wanted to draw a straight line to, say, make an arrow to this image right here, I just grab the ruler down here. To adjust this ruler, you just use two fingers to turn it any way that you'd like. So if I want it at maybe this angle, so I'll go into my pen here, I'll choose how thick of a brush I want, how opaque I want it, and then the color I want. I'll use pink for this just so you guys can see it. And then all I have to do is draw on my image. And then I'll move this ruler again. and then click the ruler again to get rid of it. And now you see I have perfectly straight lines for my arrow. You probably won't use this one a ton, but it is fun to know, and you can impress everyone you know with all of your straight lines. 
Sometimes our phones can get a little cluttered with all of the apps and the different pages that we have, and, and wouldn't it be nice to just hide those to help declutter your phone? Well, lucky for you, you can. So let's say I want to hide this last page of mine. All I have to do is tap and hold one of my apps until they start to wiggle, and you'll see everything wiggling here. And then you have these page dots down here. I just click into those, and you'll see all of my pages. They all have a check mark right now because they're all showing up. Now, if I want to hide that last page, I just uncheck it and then click done. So now if I scroll through, you'll see that that page is now hidden. There's no other page there, just the app library. If I want to undo that and get that page back, I just have to do the same thing. Hold an app until it wiggles, click the page dots, and then add a check mark here. Click done. If I scroll through, that page is back. Easy as that. Hopefully you enjoyed all these tips and tricks. If you missed parts one and two, go back and check them out. And stay tuned for part four. You might learn something new. I'll see you next time.